Hey guys, welcome to your next advanced C++ and graphics tutorials. I hope you enjoyed the zombie game challenge that we uh, did. It was about a four hour video, so I don't blame you if you didn't watch the whole thing. If you don't have the source code from that, if you didn't follow along, be sure to download it. Uh, there should be a link in the description with all of the source code that you can, that you can download. Uh, because we are going to be using this source code, this uh, zombie game, uh, in order to learn a few more things. We're going to make some enhancements to it, uh, just so we can learn a bit more about game development uh, with, you know, an actual practical application. Uh, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to teach you the difference between debug mode and release mode. Now, uh, until now, we've always been building in debug mode. Now, if you look at the top of the screen, you have a little tab here that says debug. If you're in code blocks, you will also have this same little combo box. Uh, and if you click on it, it will uh, bring up another uh, option here called release mode. Now, the difference between these two modes are whenever you're in debug mode, whenever uh, the compiler builds your game, it's not going to do any optimization. Now, what that means is it's going to basically take your code and just translate it straight into machine code, and then the game is going to run. However, if we put it in release mode, what's going to happen is before it uh, turns your, your code into machine code, or while it's doing that, it's going to do some optimization. It's going to look at your code and be like, well, how can I actually change this to make it run faster? Uh, it's not going to do a bunch of runtime checking like debug mode does, so that'll make it faster. It's also going to do a bunch of uh, cool things, like it might unroll your loops, it might do some, some uh, really cool tricks by storing counters in registers instead of storing them in memory. Uh, all sorts of cool stuff that's going to make your code run a hell of a lot faster. It's a really, really big difference. Now, you don't want to always run in release mode. Typically, when you're you know just debugging your game, you want to run in debug mode because when you're in debug mode, you get a lot more information whenever you have a crash, uh, and it does a lot more runtime checking. It's going to check your arrays to make sure you don't read beyond the end of one, and it's going to check all your uh, STD, uh, like your vectors and all that stuff. It's going to do lots of checking for you that you do want to have when you're debugging. But whenever you actually want to ship your game to somebody and have somebody else play it, or if your game gets so big that debug mode is just running really slow, you can just switch to release mode, and it's going to run with optimization. And we're going to see what the difference between that is. But first, let me tell you how to get release mode set up. If you just click release mode and run it, uh, it's not going to work uh, correctly, uh, because whenever we go to, say we're in debug mode, when we go to project properties, uh, all of these properties are set for only debug mode. If you t look up here at the top left, it says active debug. If you click here and you switch to release mode, all of your settings are not going to be set. So you're going to have to go and set all of the settings, the uh, C++ directories, make sure those are set, uh, the inputs, make sure those are all the same. You can just switch between debug and release up here and just copy everything from debug and move it over to release. I've already done it, so you don't have to watch me do it. Uh, make sure your system is set to console, uh, the subsystem. Uh, one more thing, if you go to the C++ directories, uh, there is only one thing that should be different between the two. If you go to library directories, uh, remember we used this solution deer, oops, I'm in the wrong one. We used solution deer slash, uh, or solution deer debug here. This is how we got access to the library file, the lib file that gets dumped by our, um, our bingen. Uh, instead, you're going to use a release folder when in release mode. So if you just copy this, go to release, when you paste it there, Make sure instead of debug, you have uh, release here. Because whenever we compile in release mode, uh, what's going to happen is whenever Bingen builds, it's going to put its uh, lib file in a release uh, folder. So make sure you set up all of those properties for zombie game, for graphics tutorials, and for Bingen. Uh, we're probably not going to be using the graphics tutorials project much more. We'll probably just be using the zombie game project, but you can hold on to that uh, if you want to. Uh, so yeah, that's how you do it. So make sure you get all that set up. Uh, one more thing you will have to do is you will have to make sure, oops, you'll have to make sure that in your uh, folder here, if you go to uh, your project file, we'll say graphics tutorials, if you go to the main directory, uh, this won't be here at first, you won't have a release directory, but the first time you build in release mode, so once I switch this to release up here and build, you're going to get probably an error. It's going to tell you that it's missing your DLLs. That's because it's going to build this directory right here, and it's going to put your exe in there, and it's going to put the lib file for Benjin, uh, assuming you got everything set up correctly. But it's not going to have the DLLs here. Uh, what you're going to need to do is go to your debug folder, grab glue32.dll and stl2.dll. Those are your dynamically linked libraries. Make sure you grab those and drop them in the release folder alongside uh, uh, Benjin.lib and all that. Uh, and your exe so they can actually find those so now let's actually kind of we're not going to do like true benchmarking here but let's see how much of a difference it makes let's go ahead and do a few things first let's uh, zoom our camera out our camera's really zoomed in uh, let's say const float camera uh, scale 
And let's set that equal to uh, 1.0f divided by 4.0f. So this should zoom us out by four times. Uh, and now let's set it. So let's say camera dot set scale. And we're going to set it to camera scale. So that should zoom our camera out. Uh, and then also, let's stop limiting the FPS at 60. Instead, let's just let it go as big as it wants. We're just going to make it a really big number. We shouldn't have more than 600,000 FPS. Uh, and then let's also print out the FPS to the screen. So we'll say STD, C out, uh, and we'll do FPS. That should give us a little bit of, I think it should give us three decimals of precision. That's fine. All right, so let's run in debug mode first and see what we get. We'll go ahead and let that build. All right, and we're getting 25 to 30 FPS. Uh, it's running pretty slow, as you can see. Now, I do know for a fact that has a lot to do with the video capture program. I was getting, I think, over 100 when I wasn't recording. Let's see if it makes a difference to use release mode. Now, it may not because of the video capture, but it should make a pretty big difference. So I'm going to switch to release mode. I have everything set up correctly, so I'm not going to get any linker errors or anything like that. We're going to run it, and let's see if we get higher than 30 FPS. It's like we are getting 60. So it's because of the screen capture program, it's going to kind of try to bind it at uh, 60 FPS. Uh, but I believe when I wasn't using screen capture, I was getting something like uh, 1,000 FPS or something crazy like that. Uh, maybe it was 100. I don't know. But it was really, really high. Uh, now, one thing you'll notice is since we're having a higher frame rate, I'm actually moving faster through the world. Uh, this is because we haven't used a time step yet. So in either the next video or the video after, we're going to learn about time step, and we're going to learn how to make it so that regardless of how many frames per second we're getting, the simulation always runs at the exact same speed. Thanks for tuning into this tutorial. Hope you learned a little bit about uh, you know the different release and uh, debug modes, uh, and I will catch you next time.